Hello, this is Heather Hoffman, and today I have a fun background technique for uh, these bright fall cards. I'm using gouache paint. I'm not sure if that's the exact pronunciation. That's what I'm finding online, and that's what it looks like with the spelling, but they're kind of an opaque. They're almost like a little bit of a mix between watercolors and acrylic paints. They're super fun, um, kind of just creamy and opaque. I'm using this set from American Crafts. Um, it's the set number two, which I think is the fashion set, and I've pulled out um, just a few different colors from them, and I'm using some white heavyweight cardstock, and I'm just kind of adding some little um, dots of color and just kind of a random pattern. I'm not being too specific. I'm doing um, more and less of certain colors, just depending on what I like, and the colors that I'm using from this set are Crimson Kiss, Pale Summer, Ocean Dance, Sea Kiss, and Grey Night. And then I have a wide squeegee that I'm using, and I'm just quickly swiping across the card, um, being careful. You can use a smaller one, but I had trouble with the colors mixing a little, so I really liked the width of this. Now, not to waste the extra color on there, I didn't realize how much I'd have left, so I grabbed another panel of white cardstock and just kind of tried to swipe off the extra that way on that card base and then quickly clean that off so I didn't have to worry about it. On that one, you can notice I swiped a little more and the colors got a little muddier, um, but it was still kind of a fun marbly effect. All right, now that we have our background done and that's set aside to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp a couple of the leaves from the August 2019 kit of the month. Um, the set, or this kit is so fun with the mix of lots of fall images and just a hint of kind of uh, wintry Christmassy things. I'm going to use my Misty to stamp them. Every now and then I forget to pull out the foam layer in there for um, using with clear stamps. When you're using Unity stamps, you don't need that added foam layer, so you can just kind of pop that off and not worry about it. I'm stamping this in simple black ink, and I'm going to carefully fussy cut these out um, one at a time. I'm going to use one on each of these cards, and they're pretty easy just to kind of carefully cut around using some fine detail scissors. I kind of sped through that because it was kind of self-explanatory. I didn't figure you needed to watch all of that. Now that I have those two set out, I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment. I'm going to use the same sentiment for both cards. I'm going to split up the leaves, but I'm going to use the sentiment the same. So I'm going to stamp it and heat emboss it um, on some black cardstock. I used clear embossing ink. I'm going to sprinkle on white powder and then go ahead and heat set that image. I like to do them both at the same time when I can like this because um, it kind of expedites my work um, and I don't have to worry about it. I know I've done this a lot lately and it's something I find myself coming back to all the time is white heat embossing a beautiful sentiment on black cardstock. It just looks so bold and crisp and pops. All right, now here's where I ran into a problem. I stamped them not quite far enough apart to be able to cut them apart with my paper trimmer. So I had to get a little creative there. Um, which actually ended up working well. I kind of liked that added detail on um, this one that I put on one of my cards at the end. So um, sometimes a mistake works out to be kind of a fun little um, little addition. So I kind of just fussy cut around the top. All right, now I'm going to pop those leaves over. I have a box to protect my work surface, and I'm going to quickly add some gold splatters. I like to use my Gansey Tambi um, Starry Colors palette. It's kind of my favorite gold splatters. And then I'm also going to add those over the top of those dried backgrounds from the paint. It's, now that it's dried, you can see how those just sit nice and opaque on the top and are kind of fun and sparkly. So that little touch of gold just adds a bit of elegance to these fall cards. All right, as I set those sentiments on there, I kind of looked at them and felt like they disappeared into the background a little much. So I pulled out a scrap of white cardstock and I'm gonna trim that with my paper trimmer real quick, just to add a little matte on the background and kind of help those pop up a little so you see them a little bit more. Kind of see how that one works. And I'm gonna do the same thing um, on that other one. This one I just need to be a little more careful because um, I'll have to kind of fussy cut around that top edge again, just like I did before. So. But as you can see, it's really not that hard just to get it lined up and even, even with that matting effect. All right, final finishing touch. I felt like we needed a little bit of natural fibers on there just to complete the um, all the texture on this card. Fall cards always make me think of lots of texture. So I tied some just jute string. I buy it in a big roll. You can get it in smaller bits. This is an um, ivory colored. Just tied a little bow around the bottom of each of those leaves. And then I can adhere all of these different layers together with foam adhesive, starting with the sentiments just to kind of pop them on there. And then I'm gonna add the leaves. I kind of tried to plan each of them so they overlapped a little bit on that sentiment just to kind of tie everything together. 
I like to use a big roll of foam tape and just kind of trim it down into pieces to fit behind those leaves. Um, it's kind of a nice simple way to get the foam to the size that you need without too much trouble. I buy it in a wider roll than just the typical one inch because um, when I'm doing large pieces it just saves me cutting and trimming down quite so much. All right, last little bit of that foam adhesive and we're going to add that second leaf over there. And then the final thing I did on these, I trimmed them down a little. I should have done this before, but I kind of thought of it about this point that I kind of wanted to um, set these on a white card base and add a little bit of a white border around. So I was stuck kind of doing this with all of my layers on there, which worked out okay and it really wasn't too hard. I just kind of had to plan around to fit it where I had space. And once I had those trimmed down, I grabbed some A2 top folding white card bases that I had sitting there and ready to go and just quickly adhered those in place. Super fun backgrounds and I'm totally looking forward to playing with these paints a little bit more. It's kind of a new thing I've discovered and I've really been enjoying. Thanks so much for coming by today. Have a wonderful day. Hope to see you again soon.